Well, thank you for coming on here, Pavel. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much as well. Glad to be here. So I want to get right into this thing. What exactly is it that you do? You know, how would you describe your work here in this life? Well, I would describe myself as a never ending uh, person that keeps on questioning everything. And, uh, and I think those questions is what really got me on a crazy journey uh, through self-transformation because um, my first part of a life I spend in following whatever the societal norm is. And then I kept on questioning, like, is this actually true? And is this why, how we are supposed to live? And, and are we just supposed to, you know, go to school and then find wife or husband and then have, have this, uh, you know, societal norm that made me extremely unhappy. And so I had a several different major pivotal moments in life that led me to uh, a new belief system that, you know, we're so much more than we think. There is so much more that we came here to realize. And we didn't come here to learn from the gutter, which is where I used to learn from depression and anxiety, pain, uh, you know, negative relationships and, and lack of finances. We came here to learn from love and joy and, and experience abundance on every level. But to get to that point is uh, the journey through self-transformation, which we have to kind of unhook from this crazy reality and rehook into the reality we want to live. And so in a long story short, what I do is I'm a real reality shifter. Uh, I help people with transformation. Um, I bring teachings and tools through events, immersive experiences, retreats, workshops, and also digitally. So we have like courses and on-demand library with uh, immersive interactive learning. And we also have different products to help us get out of that matrix or whatever we might call it in, in today's world and and how we take charge of our own choices and consequences back, which is the conscious shifting. <laughs> mm, awesome. Unhook and then rehook. I like that. <laughs> so where does this all start? How would you say we unhook? What does the path look like to you? So I spent the last 15 years uh, traveling the world and I basically, so I used to be a professional athlete and then I had to quit that uh, because of my health. Um, I started my first business when I was 17 and it outgrew me where I didn't rest. And that's what was my first pivotal moment where I just crashed out and I could not continue doing business and, um, you know, high level uh, professional cycling. And uh, then I did all of, I put all of my endurance back into uh, being an entrepreneur. So then I went around the U.S. and I start opening Orange Theory fitness locations uh, with uh, with beautiful mission. But I hit the same bucket again, same burnout, same unhappiness, same you know uh, unfulfillment. Now what I did do right is I committed myself that every three months I'm going to do something ridiculous, something outside of my comfort zone. And one of those uh, things uh, that I did was darkroom. So about eight years ago, I spent 10 days in darkness with no food, no, no light in the middle of Thailand. And I just wanted peace. I was this busy entrepreneur that wanted to give my cell phone away. And what I got out of it was a complete life alternation. And essentially, it took me about seven days before I found myself. And what it taught me is process of unhooking, how important it is that I actually go inward, but outside of all of what people think and say, and, 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 and it literally took me seven days to just surrender. And I start crying and crying. And I went into this beautiful state of bliss for the first time in my life where I didn't judge myself for all the bad things that I am, but I actually accepted myself for who I am. And in that day, it became really clear that uh, I have been living it totally out of out of where I want to be. What what where those true hearts desires I didn't follow, and that's when Noah Aeon came about, which is the you know the brand that we have today. And Noah means movement. Aeon is all or none, and it symbolizes duality, where you know most of us live these highs and lows and good days and bad days. And I was so sick and tired of it that I wanted to go into harmony, into that oneness with, with it all, without the judgment. And so this is an extreme, right? This is an extreme process of unhooking, which 
one of the main things that I do today and what it taught me is to rediscover my passion. So that was music. It was to rediscover my purpose, which is give all of these tools away and legacy. How do I make means with uh, living in service to others? And essentially the unhooking process comes in a cyclical way. So once a day, I spend the first half an hour to an hour of the day just by myself. I don't go on my cell phone. And I and you know, as soon as we go on a phone in the morning, we tense up, we lose the sense of our breath, and we live somewhere outside of ourselves. Yeah. And the whole day just dictates, you know, in that way. And so for me, I like to start it with what are my choices? How am I doing? Checking in with myself, kind of rediscovering that darkroom experience on daily, you know, micro blocks. And then I do some breath work, some meditation, some exercise, you know, every day changes depending on what my true desires are. And then I can take charges of the choices for the day. And it's no longer surprises, you know, what may follow. Now, once a week, I spend full day off. So I unhook from the system for a whole day. And that is, I have, I don't use any cell phone, any TV, any computer. So it's a digital fast. It's also a physical fast. And the first half of the day, I spend just by myself in nature. The second half of the day, I bring my family and, and I have three kids and, and I also connect with them. But again, it always starts with you and, mm -hmm. and we the opposite. And then once a month, I unhook for four days completely. So as you can see, it's like a progress is, you know, a little bit longer and longer in a, in a, in a cyclical way. And that is a 72 hour fast for me. That's when I can cleanse, purge. I go inside, inward. I do new cell phone and I do journal. I think about how did I do last month? What do I want to improve this next month? And we do this for our businesses, right? But we don't do it for our own lives in a lot of ways. And so these are the times that I unhook, redecide, reassess where am I heading? What do I want? And then I rehook essentially into the next reality that I'm choosing to live instead of giving the power to someone else to live it for me. And once a year, it's 15 days. And so 10 days of this is dark room. I've spent now uh, 50 days in total in darkness. So I've done wow. it every year. And um, and then I take another week or so for integration. And that's that whole block of a, of, a, of a year. And the one thing I haven't done, and I really want to, every seven years, you take a year off. And so I'm building, building up to that uh, big of a, uh, you know, cycle but think about it we keep on changing and we keep on you know either limit living in this limited reality like the software that we've where we've you know co-created for ourselves um projecting from the past into the future or we can take the pause so we can actually hear these inside hear that true guidance what is the highest path here on earth but we got to take time and we got to change the brain waves you know from the overly thinking beta thinking mind into that alpha, theta, dominance and beyond so we can hear these whispers and these thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah. You touched upon so many good points. I don't even know where to go right now, but so much truth in what you just said. Would you summarize that as the essence of unhooking is really just being still, disconnecting from the commotion and drama of the outside and taking some time to connect with the peace and stillness inside? Yeah, it's, you know, there's two ways to live, right? And there's there's a way that we keep on doing and doing and doing, right? Going from meeting to meeting to call to call. And, and essentially, it's the way of living through our monkey brain, our mind, and, you know, we all struggle. Most of us struggle with monkey brain. And I was one of them. I mean, my monkey brain would not shut up while I was in dark room, especially. It was the hardest part. And, and so, but what monkey brain is for, it's actually an important aspect of us, right? We need to have an ego, so to speak, to survive in this reality, to pay for bills, to create new new ideas and, 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 and you know, how are we going to show up? But, uh, but, but that's that's about it. You know, 95% of all of our thoughts is just repetition and clutter. And 80% of those are negative. So imagine that somebody is constantly thinking, including myself, you know, I'm not good enough and I can't and and da 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 da, da. And this, this clutter just keeps on this busy, busy noise of, of mind hacks or mind, um, mind manipulations. And so what I start doing is when you take a pause, 
that's the last thing that the mind wants, right? It will do anything to do. It will scroll on the phone. It will do everything because it's like hooked in that reality. And it's almost, this is why it's so, uh, this is why it's so addictive too, right? Like, especially like computers or phones or TVs because of that feeling and that response and reward system we're receiving. And so just like when we, you know, get rid of water or food for a period of time, Right. There's a point where the body has to work differently, where it has to reset, refuel. And, you know, in a physical fasting, it's called apoth apothegy, where our body starts eating dead cells after, you know, at least 16 to 18 hours worth of uh, intermittent fast, for example. And, you know, longer you do it, there's a, there's a greater uh, benefit to it. But so does our mind and so do our emotions as well. So I start treating each and every body as its own entity, as its own, you know, reasons to keep them healthy, right? So just like we keep healthy body, we keep healthy mind with a good source of information, with a good mindfulness practices. And also we haven't touched emotions, which is what makes our life feel real. And emotions can be really interesting because most of us suppress them. You know, we live in apathy, guilt, shame, fear. And again, same was for me. I, I didn't like myself who I was in the past, but in this process, I had to accept myself uh, so that way we can experience the higher levels of emotions, but without looking into the lower levels, we are holding them there. They want to be opened up and come out and they don't come out because we're so busy because we just keep on doing and doing and doing. So these, you know, unhooking points is really reconnection, rebuilding or rebranding who you are, how you want to go to show up. And, uh, and, and it's all out of your own you know, sovereign choice rather than what you think you want or somebody else want for you. Mm. And it's all a lot of building different rituals and habits and cycles of your life. Yeah, that's that's what brain is interesting, right? Like brain wants reward. And so if we like look at our physiological part of things, um, just like we can create positive habits, we can also create uh, negative habits. And, you know, deeper and further away we run from problems, so to speak, which this is what I used to do. You know, there was a there was a problem in life and I would try to like put it and shuffle it down and try to not look at it and go as far as I could. And then my heart, my life became hard. But then I start following the hardships in life, whatever it was, negative mind, negative emotions, negative relationship, uh, physical issues. Right. Whatever it was sleep or energy. I start looking into those things. And I use, I, I could share with you later this, this four-step process that I use. And essentially, uh, I my life started getting easier and easier and lighter. And then, you know, because I use this time to plan and to figure out where am I heading, I have now a checklist, so to speak, for the brain. So that way the brain gets a reward system along the way as well. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting that you say your life gets lighter and easier because to the mind, maybe listening to this one may say why would i want to go into a dark room for 10 days or do all of this stuff in order to find peace it seems to the mind counterintuitive but as you just described it actually makes one's life more in the essence of flow just um effortless in a way it seems contrary like i said to what it's what it's described as but in actuality i find that it just is like a natural uh flow i don't know any other word that comes about from this essence of um reorientation of cycles and rituals in one's life you know absolutely i mean i have to say like we're made up of all the thoughts we ever had emotions we ever felt and the actions we've ever done and if we decompress that and we went backwards it would go back into nothingness. And so it's an interesting like rabbit hole to follow in like a meditation, because if you think about it, you know, people tell you who you are and, and then you reflect who they are. And, and if I can sum in like why we're here, it's like we, we, we descend down to earth to exchange gifts with one another and learn from each other. Mm -hmm. But in the process, we forget how important we are to each other and we go against each other, right? And that's the whole zombie world in a lot of ways we live in. Yeah. And this is also our whole mission. Our whole mission is to unify the world one person at a time through mm -hmm. these tools, through these experiences, through these um, ways of, of unity connection 
uh, that has huge scientific evidence and benefits. And that's kind of what I've been going for in all of our events is to feel what love actually is meant to feel, to be for one another, what we're meant to be here for one another, not all of the walls we like to put out. Mm -hmm. Truly. Would you say that is what life is all about? Is, yes, being still and knowing, finding this sense of peace within, and then giving back a little bit, having a service orientation? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of the life that we're living is is a total lie. I think that a lot of the, like, our whole principles of how we're raised and what we're raised for, by whom we are raised, I think it's there's a there's a really huge evidence that we're living in a simulation, and that has been yeah. even proven by mainstream science. And so, yeah. you know, I I continue questioning everything and everyone because, and I continue asking that through the highest intentions to be connected to whatever this like prime reality is, because at the end of the simulation, there is still God, there is still love. And I truly believe that we are of the same and we are of the one oneness with, with this source, but through separation, we forget and we are doing, we're running against each other. And so now for me, it's like, how do we run towards each other and how do we express, you know, not knowing much, right? Like it's, it's funny, more I'm learning, more I literally know nothing. It's like, it's yep. really, <laughs> really interesting and difficult sometimes to integrate. But at least I feel like I am getting somewhere different than before. And I feel happier. I feel more healthier, like on every level than, than, you know, before I would, I would not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny you say that the more you learn about yourself, the more you learn how much you really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> for every one answer there's two questions that come along with it i like to say <laughs> but that's the beauty of it right is that the journey never ends is that the journey to know thyself is truly it seems like from my point of view at least a never-ending journey but that is the miracle is that we are on this never-ending journey of knowing thyself and that is truly the purpose at a maybe very esoteric level it's to know who and what you are and why you're here. And that leads to, I think, eventual purpose in the human um, experience, in the expression of a refined human experience is true purpose in how we act here, which is, I believe, and I think you believe as well, towards service. Yeah, because service to others is service to yourself. And I think That's it. it's, it's, it's funny, I, like in our experiences, we, we do some very beautiful deep connections and one of them is to realize how we can count on each other and how we can trust each other uh, because we've been so, so we, we have been hurt so many times as a society and as a past. And I think what I'm starting to see is especially in the communities and the groups uh, that we've been creating that, that are, or the people that are attracted to this, you know, these are people that have had enough and you know, these are people that are not trying to define it. They're not trying to be perfect. They're not trying to say that they're masters anymore because to me, that's the old patriarchal way of learning, you know, level mm -hmm. one, level two and mastery and this. We know nothing. And and the only thing that we can master is the process itself. And that mm -hmm. process can get better and easier and coming from a place of surrender instead of coming from a place of, you know, fear and guilt and pain. Yeah. And so I think that's the one thing I... I do know is that we don't have to hurt and we have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And would you say this knowing of this orientation is something that goes beyond the mind, maybe beyond rationale, maybe even beyond logic sometimes? It's an intuitive knowing, like something that just feels right within you? So... I've spent a lot of time with the psychics in, in Brazil. And so, you know, I, as I mentioned before, I've done some crazy stuff. And uh, essentially <laughs> one of those one of those crazy trips where this uh, was this uh, this village, psychic village in the middle of Brazil that I ended up going to. And um, again, I was an entrepreneur. I, I absolutely didn't believe in what I believe today. So just to put it into perspective, I I had an open mind and open heart. I was like, well... I'm here for a reason. Let's see what what that what what happened. 
And they teach me some really beautiful things. And one of them is we've got, you know, five physical senses, which we all know, but those are generally those that get us in trouble. And a lot of people that they come here, right, they get too overly sensitive. Uh, well, they follow the senses way too much, whatever it's sex, whatever it's food, whatever it's, you know, sound. It comes in many different ways, but it's limited. Then we've got four psychic senses or spiritual gifts, as I like to call it, because sometimes that that term has has a has a you know freaky co- conjection, and what those are, it's something that we all have. And so the first one is inner hearing, which is not a lousy monkey brain. It's the little whispers that every once in a while you know deposit into our brain, and maybe it's stop watching Netflix at night. Maybe it's start <laughs> reading this book. Maybe it's, you know, uh, quit drinking alcohol, right? Whatever it is, it always has your back. And they always creep up on you in those times and you like, don't want to hear it sometime, you know? And, and so they taught me that this is the first gift, which is inner hearing. And essentially the way we acknowledge it and, and strengthen is, is we simply state, thank you. I heard that. What you going to do about that? And, uh, and I'll get to, to how we can accelerate it uh, later. Now, so that was interesting. And I was like, yeah, I can totally hear that. Like I, I have these thoughts and there, there are these, you know, uh, there are these whispers that come in and out, but I ignore them most of the time. Now, then we've got inner feeling, which is the empaths of the world. And this is when you can feel things in your body before they happen. And essentially, uh, this could be, for example, if you walk inside of a room and there was a fight before you even went there, something doesn't feel right. Yeah. Or you had a wrong feeling about a person and then it ends up being true or about a, about a situation. So it comes into your body. You feel it in you, essentially. And same thing. Thank you. I feel that. What you going to do about that? Now that what you're going to do about it is the magic magic keyword, by the way, that strengthens that neural pathway so you can start building that trust and understanding that these senses have always your back. Now, what happens in a lot of ways is, for example, if you don't listen to it long enough, you know, maybe we get sick, maybe we lose job because it was not that greatest expression that we came here to experience. Now, then we've got inner seeing, which is the visionaries of the world. And this could be, you know, somebody like, uh, I don't know, uh, inventor, right? That has then a vision. Maybe it's in a shower. It usually comes in a lucid dreaming or it comes in the in a theta dominant brainwave uh, frequency. And maybe you are a business person that sees this whole business plan and product, right? It could come in many different ways, but it comes through seeing direct impressions in your, in your brain. Same thing. Thank you. I saw that. What are you going to do about that? Now, then you've got your inner knowing, and this is the intuition, as many of us call it. And the way this one is the hardest one to discern because of the monkey brain has its own agenda. So this is kind of what, by the way, happens is the monkey brain steps in to this like divine all knowing that is all available for all of us. And uh, and whatever we call it, you know, spirit, uh, God, uh, oneness, love, it really matters not. It is the it is the divine inheritance guidance system, like a navigation for us to be able to remember that we're not this just dense body. We're so much more. And so when you think you don't know, when you know, you do not require to think. And so that's how you discern it. You knew that you shouldn't have gotten to the party. You knew that that person was cheating on you. It was in every bone of your, your, your yourself that you just knew it. You know, you didn't think about it. And so these are the four different ways how we communicate with this this divine guidance. But the reason why most of us don't hear this or listen to it is because we're always doing and we're always busy, 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 right? Whenever you are living on the external, it goes back into the process of unhooking. It's like you train your brain, you train your body to slow it down, to go into a state of timelessness, because it's the same thing as a keynote on a piano. You know, you can be in a high note, you can be in a low note. But for the high note, you're going to hear different symphonies versus the low note. And so if you think about it this way, more time you spend on yourself, in nature, in passion, in a a, a higher vibrational states like joy, you know, maybe you dance, maybe you do, uh, you go with friends, right? Like anywhere that you experience excitement, passion or stillness and silence, you're changing these 
brain waves and you're changing your state so you can hear all of these senses better. Well said. Very well said. Yeah. I never heard it described like that with the four different senses, but as you were elucidating that for us, I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I feel like we all know that. Like you said, I'm pretty sure you mentioned that we all have these abilities and they're very subtle, extremely subtle. And if you're not still enough, you're not going to be able to hear the subtle whispers of them. But they're very powerful. That's the thing is they're very quiet, but extremely powerful and poignant for our being. And uh, yeah, I guess that just gets back to the idea of meditation. It's so important to be able to disconnect from the five senses and connect with those other four senses. And um, this is just my point. I'd like to say is that the five senses don't disappear. They just become the servant, you could say, to the four other more powerful senses. You know, the uh, the how do I put this? The inhibitions of the five senses the hooking is a little less strong right and uh i think that's the big difference is we learn to listen to that higher wisdom rather than the commotions of the other five senses and uh yeah that's the big difference man is knowing what to listen to within our being do you agree well you've touched something really important so at the beginning i was like is this for real? How does this work? But okay, I'm going to exactly follow what they taught me, right? Mm -hmm. So then I do it. And then I, for example, you know, I quit drinking alcohol. My entire life has shifted. Like I've never had bigger, I think, transformation, like all of the poisons and toxins and everything that I, that was attached to the, the, the repercussions of it, it went away. And so, so what started happening to me is when I listened to it, that voice, for example, start getting louder and louder. The vision mm -hmm. started getting clearer and clearer. So it's just like a gym, right? At first, yep. or if you learn a new skill, maybe you're not that great. And by the way, this is not a new skill. It's really just remembering the power yep. that we already have. But if you just start strengthening it and using it and working and taking that time, even in a three minutes a day, you know, even just three minutes, every so often you remember that you come back to your center and you, whatever it's through breath work, relaxation, and you just allow consciously for the stream of information to come in. Don't get frustrated. Don't beat yourself up with a stick anymore. That is not worth the the the, the try. And and because uh, by the way, I've I've spent time with Zen masters in Japan. They literally beat you with the stick at the back, and that was a <laughs> no no for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, enjoy and and take that time, and especially go against what your mind is telling you in a lot of ways. I always say follow your butterflies, because butterflies is not fear but it's something unknown and unknown has always beautiful benefits to know. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well said. Powerful stuff. I feel like true faith, if you want to say faith comes from it, like faith in knowing what to listen to within one's being, not some kind of blind outward faith of some kind of false idol that somebody tells you to believe in true faith within that you follow that is priceless and it's real it may sound crazy to somebody that has no idea they're tuning in they're listening they're like what are these guys talking about it may seem like magic right but it's real it's actually realer than real <laughs> right it's um true faith that comes from this i feel yeah we forget our biggest power we have is imagination and our choice mm -hmm. One of the beautiful benefits of being a human is that we can imagine things and we can think things into being. And so there is this beautiful uh, like value that I've um, that I it took me a long time to embody to like understand what it actually means. And it's be do have. And essentially, I was always so intrigued by it. But what I've learned is that most of us, including myself, I used to live in the opposite of that. So I would have to have the right resources, have the right partner have the right time before I take the right steps. That's the do. And then I never become it because it's always this far thing somewhere in the, in the future. And then the reverse of that is that you become it. You embrace it. You feel it. You visualize it. You think it. Then you do it. You take the right steps and action because a lot of, especially the spiritual community, 
forgets the action because that's really important in the process as well. You know, we can magnetize all day long, but if we're not fully um, embodied in that, it is not going to come <laughs> as, mm -hmm. as quick as you want. And then you have the results as a natural flow of life. And so one of the big things that we do in our events is we we take people into this dreaming exercise. And you can follow this right now as, you, as you're listening is that what I like to do is I create this imaginary holographic tree of my life. So I would go into meditation, I would just close my eyes and I would just settle in for a little bit. Then I imagine this holographic tree of life where at the base of the tree is where I'm sitting right now. And at the top of the tree is where I take the last breath uh, before I leave uh, my body in this lifetime. Wow. And then I go backwards. So I start thinking, okay, what would be an incredible journey? What would make me feel happy and 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 fulfilled if I was going backwards and this was my last breath right now? So then I start getting all these feelings and thoughts because again, it all it's happening through questions, right? And then I'm like, okay, I would love to do this and create that and learn this, you know, all of those skills. And I start being a dreamer because we don't dream enough and dreams are meant to be lived, not for something someday, one day in the future, right? So this way, I kind of look into that, that roster of who I am today, because this changes, right, as well as we expand. And then I go down 10 years and I think about the milestone of 10 years. What would it look like and what would I be, what would I have done by then to be on the perfect milestone to hit the lifelong dreams? Then I go down to a year, month, and day. And every day I commit myself and that I'm going to spend one to four percent of my time on realizing those dreams. So that way, every single day, I'm one step closer to this greater expression that I am choosing to you know, live. And so this way, there is no, everything is cyclical, brain is cyclical, every, you know, pa, you know, it's all based on patterns, seeking patterns. So why not use the patterns for our advantage mm -hmm. instead of using it in, in, in everywhere else, but like not in our own life. And that's really all I do is, is working with own, within those metrics to be able to experience uh, what I am here to do. Mm. Well said. I like that. Yeah. The dream is now. <laughs> yeah, we think it into being. That's that's hard to like understand at first, but then you think it, you feel it. So so sorry. One more thing. I I've learned yeah. about you know there is this whole thing about law of attraction and creativity creation, right? And and uh, and you know there's two ways to create or attract or whatever we call this. One is the mental way, the the mind energy which is what we think we want, which a lot of times in today's society, we've been, you know, programmed to think that Ferraris and big houses and, and I don't know, Gucci uh, is, is, is the way. Materialism. And, yeah. Materialism. Right. And, and, and again, I don't want to say there's nothing wrong with it, right. Whatever you, you choose, it's okay. But is it your choice? That's what I would ask first. And is it mm -hmm. actually what your true heart's desire is? Because the way you create with mind is you set the intention, you do visualization, maybe you you clean the garage, right? So that way you can put the Ferrari in. Maybe you uh, you you know you apply for the right job so you can buy the right house, and you can create this. This is what the the movie Secret was built upon was literally how to create through your mind, and um, and but then mind has a polarity. It's a limited way of creating. And this is why you see somebody that gets the house all of a sudden loses a job, maybe a couple of months down the road and can't pay for the house. Or maybe it catches on fire. Maybe, you know, there's a there's a uh, there's a variety of different uh, issues that arise. And then all of a sudden you're just like chasing in that same same loophole of what else you want to create. Now, the way you create with your heart is you first create these holographic images if this universe is a, is a holographic universe, this is another huge you know topic that has been proven by many. Um, imagine that you start working with the holograms, right? And you actually imagine and project those visions, right? So you feel it, you you see it, you imagine it, then you feel it. So that's the supercharger is the emotions, right? So you you feel that enhanced emotion of of having it as it's happening right now, and then. You set the intention and attention, how you're going to get there. So as you can see, it's the reverse. When you, when you create with your mind, you set the intention and attention. 
But this, it actually goes stir. You first feel it, embody it, be it. Mm -hmm. That's the being, doing, and having. Yeah. Powerful again. Now, would you say from tapping in to ourself, self-realization, this whole path, our wants change or our will changes? As in, we think we want the Ferrari, the Gucci, the stuff of the material world, right? We think we want that. But really, what we want is a little bit different than what's been um, told we want. So that's when surrender comes in handy. And this is what the yeah. thing with heart is. So one of my biggest, in, there's two ways to create even within the heart. So one way is that you you choose something out of your your will, your heart, something that you really want. But the key is it is for the greatest good of the whole. So this is how it doesn't bound into duality is because it benefits you, benefits another person and benefits the whole. I call it a triple benefit. You know what I mean? Where it's not just win-win, but it's actually yeah. a triple benefit of anyone involved. Because ultimately, again, it works in sequence and number, even the way we, we create that. The other thing is, is to create from the divine will, right? So to speak. And this is further and further you connect into your true self further and further you start realizing that you really have not that much of a choice other than the main choice that is the choice of all because we are all and this can get really complicated it's it's a mind puck so to speak <laughs> yeah because because we are individual representation of of one thing right yeah. and this is when like when you get past this there is not even duality there is no polarity because what is what is duality? It's just the opposite of the one same thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so so but but it's funny because like you go through this process to to start embodying and realizing and understanding these concepts and then you start playing with them. But you know, I always say before before I speak, before my day, and it's please use me as an instrument of love and light in the perfect amount needed for the greatest good of the whole in a triple benefit. So I, I, my, my intention is now to really work within that. And if along the way is something that I'm really intrigued by, maybe I want to learn skill, maybe I want to travel to a different country, then I would just, if it is for the greatest good of the whole and I'm meant to be there, make it happen. And I literally just throw it back at the universal feedback to make it happen at the right time. And I have no attachment to it because I live in this state of service, which allows me to not be in a prison of my own thoughts yeah yeah surrender is so important i feel like that is at the purest level of all religions past the dogma the pure belief of all systems of belief is really just surrender to a greater force that you are a part of and let that lead the way and it will truly it will lead the way in all of your endeavors of life and you mentioned it too it also comes with that surrender is non-attachment to result right personal result egotistical result that may or may not come from this um this wavelength this embodiment yeah and that is freedom man that's truly being free is saying all right i'm gonna let my hands off the steering wheel here just do what thou wilt <laughs> thy will be done and it's with that, quite easy and quite simple. Just like you said, have that foundation of um, what is your, what was that saying? It's almost like a prayer. You said at the beginning of the day, you say something. Oh, uh, please use me as an instrument of love and light in a perfect amount needed for the greatest good of the whole in a triple benefit. Yeah, that's that's so succinct. That's awesome. I think that if you start every day off with that saying, that prayer, it'll do a lot of good for yourself and for the whole world. That is, uh, that's quite beautiful. I like that a lot. Well, and you know what it comes from, right? Um, think about like in our business world, we we love win-win, right? And win-win is like something that finally people are starting to get, right? Yeah, yeah. But what if you get this amazing, I don't know, pipeline deal, right? That goes through um, uh, sacred land, right? But then the pipeline burst has a great source of income, right? For the buyers and sellers. But then maybe the pipeline bursts. And then it like damages, you know, so much of the land and then it's not a triple benefit. And so that's why I like I, I, I seek this higher standards because our standards have been so low. Yeah. And, and and honestly, rightfully so. We've been so 
uh, we have been taught that we're limited. We have been taught that we're we're nothing. We are going into schools that are packaging us into uh, into you know four square uh, walls, and we're 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 raised to be you know uh, basically factory workers. Another brick in the wall. Yeah. So like imagine, and you know, f- for me, I, I I could not be in school. I literally I I failed it so hard. Like it just wasn't for me. And uh, but I already had my first business when I was 17. So I actually I paid my friend to finish high school for me online <laughs> because I I was already making the means to to do that, but I was always into books and studies and workshops and learnings. And so, but I wanted to learn what I actually what my heart is calling me instead of what I'm being, you know, indoctrinated with. And and so that's that's kind of where we have to start. It's like with our children, with our relationships, with our foundations. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, for me, like our third child, we're completely unschooling her. She's not even going through any of this. And it's like an experiment for us. Like what can happen if we just allow her to teach us how to teach her, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's the big difference in this whole thing is true power and not power in the colloquial sense of being able to dictate the will of others self empowerment comes from this and that is again priceless like when you feel that you have this like ability these secret powers these sidhis within you it's uh, it, i don't know man it's um it's kind of a miracle, <laughs> right? When one sees this and lives on this wavelength, it's truly miraculous. And even more part of the miracle is that this is available for every single human being on earth. This divine will that we can embody is available for all of us. We don't have to listen to the past paradigm anymore. We really don't. And I think that's what's happening right now, slowly and slowly, maybe not as slow as we think, but Gradually, we are all waking up to this self-empowerment. Every day that goes by, we are finding a little bit more liberation in how we, how we just conduct ourselves here. And uh, yeah, it's truly a wonderful time to be alive, and it's a wonderful time to be able to have people like you lead us in this. You know, guides that show the way that this is possible to be a testament for others and um, so we can ultimately create a better world, right? Isn't this what it's all about? Is so we find this in our own life and then we serve each other and kind of kumbaya right (laughs) right without sounding too corny is that if we were all to embody this wavelength that we're speaking on what a world it would be right sort of reminiscent of heaven on earth i don't want to sound too corny and cliche here but is that maybe an end goal i don't know if there is an end or beginning to this whole thing but where this is leading us to is just a better world overall do you foresee that well i think it's it's refining for me day by day it's really interesting because a lot of the mystics talk about new earth i think even bible talks about but maybe it's the heaven on earth uh mm-hmm. and, uh, and, kingdom and of I heaven. Think kingdom of heaven and i think mm-hmm. that's the life that we we can live while we're here now i i truly believe that it's a way that we have to first like un- unhook from all of these past thoughts and ideas and 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 problems and issues and forgive ourselves and move into that higher state of vibrational um, resonance. And, and I think that's what's happening right now. I think that's what so many of communities are experiencing. And I think COVID was a great uh, discernment of this, where you yeah. either had a group of people that were led by fear or they were led by love. And um, and the people that went by love, you know, they are experiencing greater freedom than ever. They've been, mm-hmm. you know, and the people that are led by fear, you know, there is no fear, right? Like fear is absolutely a hoax besides okay. the fear of your, you know, inherent life. And so if I if, if I ever am wondering, like, what to do, right? And like, is this information right or not? I simply ask these questions. Is this information limited? is it limitless or i ask what would love do now mm-hmm. or i ask does it work for me or does it not work for me and so through these questions i start 
being able to really understand, you know, what is this? And and I don't understand fully where we're heading, but I do understand the feeling and see the communities that are also starting to, you know, be abundant, be healthy, be understanding this this life. And it still has obstacles. It still has these these uh, these washes, so to speak, because I see it in a way of like a cycles where where you get you get a micro cycles, which is like the things that you can affect yourself, which could be your your thoughts, your emotions, your your uh your attitude it could be your your connection uh it could also be your job right you could get triggered by your job in a different sequences you can get triggered by different people by different uh situations and these situations and people and thoughts they keep on coming back to the surface yeah. and you can either re-see them anew to recreate that reality of yourself about yourself and about another or you continue putting it back and then I'll see you later, right? Whenever you feel ready that you are ready to see it. And so, and I truly think that that's what this whole like cosmic washing machine, I, I like to call it, <laughs> uh -huh. is, is, uh, is happening for. Because we every single day have an opportunity to either run away and or be reactive or be proactive, which means that we take charge of the situation. We go back to our breath. We relax into our body. We surrender and that surrender thing, I'm, I'm going to show you a really funny song. Um, anytime life gets really tough and you you just like don't know what to do and you want to cry or you're really bad, I, I've learned to sing this song. And it's, it is what it is, so what? <laughs> and it's this little cha-cha and it's, 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 you know, it's weird and funky, but what I, what happens is I laugh at first. I laugh at myself. Like, why am I so serious? Yeah. Why does this actually even matter so much? Why am I being so intense? And it does not mean that I don't care. I don't want you mm. to like think that this means that I surrender. I accept it for what it is at this moment. Like it is what it is, right? So what, what can you do about it is the next phase, right? Mm -hmm. And you can either react just like, when somebody crosses in front of you in a car, right? You can yeah. go into a rage yep. or you can proact, which is you surrender, you relax into your body, you connect back to your breath and you just breathe through it until that emotion arises and releases. And that's what I mean by cosmic cleansing is that every single situation that gives you the boiling water back up into your system, you view it as a way to cool it down and to learn from it and move out of it so you don't have to experience it ever again. Mm -hmm. And that's how my past marriage was. You know, it was really, I've learned so much. And, uh, and, but I, I, but it was this never ending roller coaster of, of emotions. And when I, when I, and I, I was learning through the gutter, I was learning through, you know, fear and pain and, and, and manipulations. And, you know, now I get to learn love and i get to learn through the same lessons just at peace and and i never thought this was possible and and it is possible mm -hmm. and i want this to be for everyone and this is this is you know my why why i share all these tools is it's not that hard but we gotta like stop keep on running away and we gotta stop you know wanting something but like how bad do you want it how badly are you ready to let something go and those are the questions that you have to ask and if you're still are okay halfway getting punished and living in pain and living in codependencies, then you're you're fully uh capable of doing so. I mean, you've been maybe doing it for decades, like like for me. Yeah. But if you're done and ready to learn from something else, there is another way. And there always is another way. There's always another way. And the way is the way. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, man. I think that's a good note to wrap this up at, to be honest with you. There's always another way. Always, literally always. Every single moment we have that choice to be proactive or reactive. And it really starts with the question of what you said. What would love do? <laughs> it's like, what would Jesus do? <laughs> what would love do in this moment? And I think that's the difference, depending on how you answer that, of proactivity or reactivity. And... That is truly, I think, how we create a better life and ultimately maybe a better world. And uh, yeah, man, I think it's a good note to wrap this up at, to be honest with you. Do you have anything else you want to say? Uh, well, no. So this is this is this is 
some of the symbological parts that we do and we work. And I think what's been interesting is that finding the right group of people is really important yep. because I Community. see so many people around the country that they feel like they're alone. They feel like they are not being, um, you know, heard and supported and more you change as a person. At first you might feel like the dark sheep in the, in the room, but then all of a sudden you're going to start matching frequencies with other people like you. And so seek out these type of events and differences and with that deep intention, you know, if it is for the greatest good of the whole, make it happen. And, uh, and this is the type of communities that we, we create. So we do over 100 events a year all across the world. And uh, we literally just travel from city to city, to country to country to teach people in an immersive way what, what these tools are. And, and it's mostly around breath work, meditation, sound healing, and biohacking. But uh, this is something that if this resonates with you, come on our tour with us, uh, check us out, and uh, I will be more than happy to uh, share with you more. Awesome. Yeah, I'll put all your stuff down in the description for people to find you. And uh, that's it, man. I really appreciate you coming on here. You're a wonderful being. I can tell you really understand this stuff. And I wish you all the best. Keep doing your thing. Truly, I feel a resonance from you. And... Um, that's it. Keep doing your thing. <laughs> you, uh, you're something special, man. So thank you for coming on here. And thank you for anybody that listened this long as well. That's it. So much. <laughs> peace and love to you and peace and love to the listener. Goodbye, everybody.